appreciate the opportunity to be here today. Um, when Dr. Mikowski invited me to speak, I said, well, what am I going to say to a room full of optometrists that's going to interest them about how physical therapy uh, interacts with what you all are doing? And she assured me that this was a very friendly audience of interdisciplinary folks. And this is my first neuro, uh, Nora conference, and I had the opportunity to attend the Clinical Skills 2 workshop for the past couple of days. And the theme that I kept hearing over and over again is it is so important for the optometrist to collaborate with and work with the therapist to achieve the optimal outcomes. And that was very exciting and very refreshing to hear because as a physical therapist, I will tell you that for a long time I did not even know that your profession existed or that how, how we could work together to help patients. And a question that I have gotten from some optometrists that were in the clinical still skills two class is, you know, how should I approach a physical therapist? What should I say to get this relationship started? And, and what's a good first step? And I would say that from, from my perspective as a physical therapist, one of the biases that still exists in the hospital setting is that you have to wait six months or a year before addressing the visual system. And on the whole, I think a lot of therapy professionals still believe this. But I think we know now that really that, that intervention can happen so much faster and will be so much more beneficial to the patient if we start getting these systems to work together faster. So from the very outset, I think one thing that you can do to communicate with your therapy professionals is educate them that this intervention, this partnership can start very early in the rehab process. Um, so that's why I'm here to talk today. Uh, also, if you are not already working with a physical therapist, because this was another question that I got, you know, how do you open that conversation? How do, you, how do you tell a PT what you need in order to help best help your patients? And so I hope that this presentation will be something that you can take back to the therapist in your community and say, you know, here, this is coming from a PT's perspective of, of how she starts this process with these clients. Maybe this is a starting point that we can develop some communication and some relationship on how we can help these folks. All right, so you guys are addressing the visual system. My role as a physical therapist is to try to really bump up that somatosensory awareness so that a person can match what they feel and how they move with what they see. So my thesis of my whole presentation is that the role of the physical therapist is to utilize interventions that are going to improve somatosensory awareness. Okay, so we know that there are three systems that are important for postural control and balance. Obviously the visual system, somatosensory, and vestibular. And we know from, um, from studies, and Paterka is one of the, the studies that I'm quoting here, that the reliance on each system is reweighted according to the situation. So for a healthy in individual in a well-lit environment, fir firm base of support, they're going to be relying 70% on somatosensory, 20% on vestibular, and 10% on vision. However, if that situation changes, and they're standing on an unstable surface, the systems are going to reweight to be less dependent on somatosense sensation and more reliant on the vestibular and visual input for postural orientation. All right, so these three systems interact in the brain. There was a pointer, here we go. You have visual information from the optic Optic tract, and, uh, optic tract and occipital cortex and somatosensory information coming up through the spinal cord and they meet together at this little purple dot that is the superior colliculus. There are also four vestibular nuclei in the brain stem that receive information and contribute to this overall system of sensory integration. We're all familiar with the work of Padula in this room, and I have two studies that where he talks about the role of visual midline shift in the neurologic population and the benefits of yoked prisms on improving balance, midline orientation control. So we have established that, oh, there we go. Okay, 
So we have established that yoked prisms are a beneficial intervention for a improving visual midline orientation in this population. But these studies, and even in, in Dr. Mikowski's case study, when she's talking about putting a prism on a person and evaluating their movement, you're looking at the immediate effects of, of this visual shift on movement. But what happens over time? Is that just because you see an improvement when you put those glasses on someone, does that automatically mean that that improvement is going to be maintained over time? You know, this person has visual issues. She's had a stroke. Obviously, she has some significant postural issues. These have developed over time. I mean, this, she is five, six, seven years post-stroke. So putting a pair of glasses on her eyes is not necessarily going to make a substantial change in her postural alignment. She has soft tissue changes. She perhaps even has bony structural changes that have happened as a result of maintaining this shifted position over time. But how did she get here in the first place? Was her visual system shifted and then she adapted physically to accommodate around this spatial orientation? Or did she have long-term positional strategies, muscle overactivity or underactivity that physically put her in this position and over time her visual system matched where she positioned herself physically? We'll never know the answer to that, but it brings the question of, what happens when there's a mismatch in physical information and visual information? Who is going to win?